In this class, you will study about geometric relationships, learn how they work, and then apply them to a design. You learned in the last class the necessity for inserting geometric and dimensional constraints to correctly define design intent. There are several types of geometric constraints in AutoCAD. First, let's study the coincident constraint. Through this, you define two or more superimposed entities, which means they will coincide and occupy the same space. When this constraint is applied, then whenever one of the coincident objects is moved, the other moves automatically, and vice versa. Let's take a look. Concentric. This relationship makes the arc centers and circumferences coincide, and then the entities are placed at the same center. Also in this case, whenever any element is moved, the others linked to it will move automatically. See. Parallel. This constraint keeps linear elements parallel. This constraint makes it impossible for two elements to cross each other, as they must be kept equidistant. For example, two parallel straight lines. All the points are analyzed between the two straight lines and kept equidistant. Take a look at this. Perpendicular. This constraint defines two elements placed perpendicularly which means they are placed at 90 degrees angles, as the example shows. There are also horizontal and vertical constraints, so, as their names say, they place elements at horizontal or vertical positions based on the UCS. And in equal constraint, when two or more objects are inserted, an equality constraint is applied. This constraint makes related element measurements remain the same. When this constraint is applied to all elements, they maintain the same measurement, and then only one dimension is required to update all other elements. All geometric constraints, when correctly applied, reduce the number of dimension values applied to them. This also facilitates design editing, thereby streamlining its construction. Another way to interrelate dimensions is by using dimensional constraints, and this will be studied in the next class. Dimensional and geometric constraints are employed jointly to define part geometry. As you have already studied, geometric constraints are indispensable elements applied to design intention. Through these, you define how geometries behave and interrelate to each other in the editing process.